Mr. Kendall, you don't want to waste all that nutritious vitamin A, Mr. Kendall, do you? Now, why don't you just finish your peas and carrots, Mr. Kendall? Well, why don't we just throw them out, Mr. Kendall, and she won't know the difference. Good idea. She'd say that if I didn't finish my plate, I couldn't leave tomorrow. Leave? You mean they're releasing you from the hospital? That's right. After tomorrow, I'm a free man. <laughs> nice to see you. You crazy boy. Okay, I get you a drink, a beer. Beer. Hey, here we go out for a beer, huh? There's a nice place down the block. I ain't interested in drinking right now, Abbott. You hungry? Maybe a little yogurt or banana? Why are you so interested in making this into a social call, huh? Well, that's what it is, isn't it? Or it should be. Uh, you and I, we haven't had a chance to sit down and talk, have we? Isn't that why you're here? <laughs> Already done my talking to you, pretty boy. I told you to stay away from Becky. You didn't hear. I think maybe, maybe your ears is plugged up or something. I come over here to unplug them. Not without Luke. Look, my mother told me once never to put anything smaller than an elbow in my ear. wonderful that you're getting out of here tomorrow. Yeah, but uh, it's also somewhat strange. But what do you mean? Well, I never thought I'd get out of here. Alive, anyway. Well, now that uh, everyone is safe and sound, don't you feel just a little bit silly that you were so determined to die? Nope. If things happen the same way, I'd still feel that my life should have been traded for theirs. I'm sorry I asked. I should have known the answer. Well, that's all behind me now. Just, uh, forever this time, I hope. I'm not thinking about dying anymore. Obviously, the fates want me to live, and, uh... Yeah? What? Well, I was just thinking about something that Ed Hall said to me when we were going back and forth about whether I should be traded to the terrorist or not. He said, you're not going to die. So you might as well get used to living. And that sort of stuck with me. Well, how do you mean? Well, it seemed to me that for the last year or so, I've sort of been stuck in neutral, you know? And uh, I realized that that's being half dead. So I've got to shift gears and get moving again. I've been kind of thinking the same way you have about my life and my future and where I'm going, what am I going to do? Do you know? I have uh, one or two plans that I'm taking around right now. Do you want to tell me about them? No, no, not yet anyway. Sounds very mysterious. I don't mean to be, really. It's one of those things you're kicking around me? Oh, never mind. Forget. I'm sorry, I should never have asked that question. Don't answer. Well, 
Well, Paul, obviously I am thinking about you, about us. Except that I think that we should be thinking about ourselves. I mean, I think you should be thinking about you, and I should be thinking about me, and we should be thinking very selfishly. I don't really think you're capable of being selfish. How can I say that? After I came back to Landview and, and forced myself back into your life again, I mean, that was being selfish. The fact that I love you doesn't, you know, change that. Well, at any rate, you know, I just feel that since we really do only have one life to live, we should try to live it as fully as possible. You're right. And I think that, that you should think about what makes your life full, or what can make your life full, and to the exclusion of anybody else, just think about you and that one life. you to come over here and sit down. Oh, honey. Honey. Oh. Luke did this to you, didn't he? Yeah. But I got something more important to think about now. What do you mean, Richard? Luke's gonna go after him. I know it. What did he tell you? He doesn't have to tell me. He's been threatening him. I know he's gonna make it good now. Oh, dear. You think Richard could handle him? Are you kidding? Miss Hawkins, he doesn't just use his hands. He's got a knife and a gun. Wait a minute. No, the gun's still here. Well, thank God for that. Now it has to get you out of here, away from that man. He'll only come after me. We'll deal with that when we come to it. The important thing now is your safety, yours and Richard's. Miss Hopkins, I told Richard. I told him everything. Did you? About... Your stepson. I told him about the, the rape and that I killed him. Now he knows and he doesn't hate me. Of course not. Becky, for the first time in my life, I'm going to say I told you so. Now, how many times did I try to convince you that Richard loved you, loved you too much to run away and leave you alone? I don't know why I didn't see that the truth would have been better than all those lies. Because you were afraid. And now that I've met Luke, I understand why. What am I going to do now? Richard's going to... Luke's going to kill him. Honey, there's only one thing you can do. You have to call the police. The police? Yes. I can't do that. If Richard's life's in danger, you can. I'm going to go over there. That's what I'm going to do. I mean, they're fighting over me, so maybe there's something I can do to stop it. No, no, that is the worst thing you could do. Oh, Becky, you know, the minute he sees you, Luke is going to get angry, and then Richard would... Try to protect you and then... Oh, no, that's not it. Well, then what am I going to do? I don't know. I don't... Maybe. You could warn Richard. I mean, you call him and you say, get out of that apartment before Luke gets there. I tried to call him before and the line was busy. I'll try now. Come on, Luke. I don't want to use that. Wrong, boy. I can't wait to use it. Hey, what about the chivalry, huh? <laughs> Slap on the face. Pistols at dawn. All that stuff. Put away that knife, Luke. Come on, show me what kind of man you really are, huh? You're trying to goad me into getting rid of the knife. But it ain't gonna work, boy. Because I got nothing to prove to you except my word. I'm a man of my word, and I done give it that you was going to get hurt if you didn't stay away from Becky. Mm. Is that how you kept Becky down North Carolina all that time? Mm. With a knife? She was with me. She wanted to be with me. I didn't have to force her. I don't think you've got much interest in living, Abbott. I thought maybe I'd just come over here and just cut that pretty face up of yours a little bit. Now I think maybe I'm going to have to kill you. I'll kill you, Luke. You're going to kill me, Luke. I wouldn't bury myself in your stinking knife. you come. 
coming out of the River Rat Bar, I couldn't believe my eyes. Why? Suits me perfectly. Oh, Karen, don't be ridiculous. A hundred dollar call girl does not hang out in the River Rat. I was not hanging out in the River Rat. I was finishing up a business venture, and sometimes I happen to meet my manager there. Oh. Well, what is Marco's take? Half. Half? Well, that's absurd, Karen. You don't need him anyway. Why don't you get rid of him? I don't think you understand, Hal, but I'd love to, but I can't. Are you saying there's more to this arrangement than meets the eye? Would you like to tell me about it? No, I can't. Can't and won't. Let's just say that it's a business venture that was Marco's idea, and uh, I'm sort of stuck with it. Oh, but Karen, you love to pick up strange men. I should know. I was the first, wasn't I? Can I you? Yes. And if I had to do it all over again, you'd be the last. What is this depression that keeps surfacing? Now here I thought you were enjoying yourself, all that money. Shopping, buying things like crazy, being happy. I don't like buying clothes anymore, Talbot. I guess it's because I don't like the body that they cover anymore. Well, it's true you haven't valued the, the body as much as the clothes you've put on it. Mm. Sort of a warped point of view, isn't it? But then you sort of approve of that, don't you? You've certainly benefited from it greatly. Well, from time to time, yes. But you've been so unhappy lately, Karen. It's not fun being with you anymore. Tell me about it. Ask the uh, gentleman that I was last with. He'll tell you how much fun he had. If you're not careful, Karen, you're going to scare away all your business. I can't wait. I can't wait till I scare away all the men in this town and then maybe Marco will let me quit. Oh, now we're back to Marco again. You know, this is beginning to sound more and more like blackmail of some sort. Is it? Interesting young man, Marco. Hmm, interesting if you like con men and creeps. Well, as a matter of fact, uh, part of my interest is in that. I'm thinking about going into business with him. With Marco? Hmm. Are you out of your mind? Oh, I don't think so. The more I hear, the more I think he might be the perfect partner. Why? Well, for money. Tell me, you have enough money for a couple of lifetimes. <laughs> oh, Karen, there is no such thing as enough money. I must have changed a lot more than I realized. Because now I see how so much money could be, and just enough. Well, you didn't have the experience I did as a kid. You see, my father was terribly wealthy, and we lived incredibly well until I was 14. Then one day, he came home and announced that he had lost everything. Everything. Business venture. Including your house? Everything, Karen. My teens were miserable years for me. About once a day, I vowed that when I made money, I'd never lose it. I'd never suddenly become poor. So the only way to keep that vow was to keep making more money. Thus, my considering going into a new business with Marco Dane. Well, if you go into business with Marco Dane, it'll have to be shady. It'll be illegal or immoral or both. <laughs> yes, I know. I don't understand you, Talbot. You have everything. Money, position, power, a family that you say you don't want to lose, and yet you're willing to gamble with all of it. Let's just say that I like playing both sides of the street. It, uh, it keeps life interesting. But you know, you feel the same way. Not anymore, I don't. Right now, I'd, I'd give anything just to be a housewife. Instead, here I sit with a drink that I don't want, that I don't need, trying to figure out how I can tell my husband that I can't go on a vacation with him because my pimp won't let me. Sounds like one of those ideas that's going to last for about a month. And then one day you're going to come to me and say, Peter, the honeymoon is over. From now on, you have to eat dinner in the hospital cafeteria. Maybe. 
Um, maybe not. Uh, simply because I'm uh, jealous. Wait a minute. I think I missed something here. Or did you just say that you're jealous of the hospital cafeteria? No, I mean of all the uh, pretty nurses that eat here. Oh, I got you. Come on, you're not serious. I mean, you never struck me as a jealous type. Oh, I am. I'm uh, slightly jealous and uh, possessive. I mean, I am Dorian's sister. You didn't expect me to escape all of the traits. You know. <laughs> Look, just so long as you're slightly jealous and slightly possessive, because either one of those in the extreme is unbearable. Yes, sir. I will make a note of it and file it away. Good. Anything else you'd like to coach me on before we're married? No. I think I'll save the rest for after we're married. Um, I hate to bring this up, but um, I don't have much time. I talked to your sister this afternoon. Oh? What, did she uh, tell you what a mistake you were making? That, uh that I would probably uh, be the cause of your career being ruined and your life? No. She... Oh, no, she probably reminded you how disturbed I was and how disturbed I always will be. And, oh, and that sanitarium, sanitarium bills are very expensive. Yeah. I'm sorry. I just, I just don't believe that I have you. I won't believe it until I, until I have the ring on my finger, until... To your offer a honeymoon. You mean you're afraid that Dorian is going to swoop down and snatch me away from you, huh? you would have done exactly what I did. Well, I don't know. I don't think we're ever going to be able to test that theory, are we? So, uh, why don't we just forget it? Joe, I don't know what I can do for you and Vicky to make up for all the pain I've caused you. It wasn't you that caused it, Paul. It was body, her insanity, that caused the whole thing. Thank you. Well, she is something else, huh? Unbelievable. Joe, tell me the truth. Did you ever think that you and Jenny would get out of this alive? In the end, neither Jenny or I believed it. Thought one of us might make it. I figured Bonnie would have to kill either Jenny or me in order to remain credible. But listen, everybody's all right now. It's fine. So why don't we just get on with our lives and uh, our friendship? It's great. It's okay by me. By the way, I like your mustache. Hmm? Oh, thank you. So does Kevin. Every time I kiss him on the neck, he goes, Yeah. yeah. <laughs> When are you getting out of this place? When are you coming back to work? Oh, they'll let me out tomorrow, but for what I'm going to do, I... Hey, wait a minute. You're not thinking of leaving, leaving the Lord Press, are you? Leaving Landview? No, 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 no. I'm not leaving Landview. I'm tired of running. And I like my job, and I want to keep it, but... Uh, what is... But me? Well, I'll tell you what. Ask me my plans tomorrow. I might have an answer for you. Hello? Yes, it is. Yeah. Oh, that's terrific. Yeah, right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Well, guess what that was? I guess. That was, pardon me, our reservations. My love, we are due for seven fun-filled days and nights in glorious, sunny... Acapulco! <laughs> well, that's just great. When, yeah. when do we, uh, when do we leave? Tomorrow night. <laughs> Tomorrow night? Yeah. <laughs> Here's the plan, you see. I thought we'd drive up to camp, see Danny, spend the day, spend the night with him, and then tomorrow night, off to Acapulco. Tomorrow night? But why do we have to go so soon? Well, why not? Well, you have to shop and pack and no, get ready. No, 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 You throw a bunch of things in a suitcase, some shorts, shirts, bathing suit, whatever. If we need anything fancy down there, we buy it. What do you mean we buy it? I mean, do I throw money away like that? My dear, we are going first cabin all the way. 
Who knows? I might even take you dancing every night. Yeah. Oh, I don't think I could bear that. Well, look at this now. This right here. This is our hotel. Very romantic, mm. nice little rustic place yes. tucked away by the sea. Looks looks just wonderful. But did you tell Danny about this plan? Oh, I thought we'd drive up and surprise him. Gotta tell you, I miss the kid. Yes. So do I. So, sitting at the breakfast table in the morning just isn't the same. I miss those big eyes and those freckles. You know what, honey? I think we're being unfair to him. Huh? Well, because I th he sees you uh, he sees you less than I do. I mean, the only time that you see him is when you have breakfast with him, when he goes to school, and you're almost never home for dinner, and when he you come home at night, he's, he's almost always in bed. I'm sorry about that, but what's that, what's that got to do with the second honeymoon? Well, I, I feel selfish. I, I feel a little guilty, and... Well, I, I just... I don't care about going dancing with you seven nights or even one night. I just... I think our vacation should be a family outing. Well, you didn't, you didn't take Danny out of camp? Oh, no, 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 no. He, he loves camp. I, I think we ought to postpone it until he comes back. Huh. Well, honey... He, he loves you and needs you just as much as I do, and I, I'd love to have seven glorious days and nights in Acapulco with you, but I just, I, I really wouldn't enjoy it thinking about him. I, I know you made all the arrangements. Honey, what do you think? in a moment. to be able to sit here and look at you. Even with that mustache. Does my wife know you're talking to me like this? <laughs> really? Oh, come on. You know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. It's good to be here, Pat. Wait. Did you get hurt at all? No. Oh, no, my. Even a checkup here in the hospital a little while ago, I'm fine. Except for one small bump on the back of the head. Here. Thanks to Herman. Mm. Hang on. Look at the Irish, but as I said to Paul, time to forget all that and go on. I mean, as I say, home to say, all's well that ends well. I hear that. Right. What did this, uh, this whole thing do for you? Well, it made me think, think differently than I ever had before about life and the things that get lost in everyday living. What has been the result of all that thinking? I'm not quite sure. But I'm getting closer, I think. <laughs> Either? Yeah, that and everything else. Tell me something, Kendall. 
How does it feel to always be a winner? Mrs. Hopkins, I ain't in a very good mood right now. And if you want me to get ugly about getting in this house to talk to my wife, well, will you save us both a whole lot of trouble if you just get out the way. Fine, uh, now, what will the charge be for this? Well, as close as I can figure it, I'd say, uh, $280, maybe $300. Oh, and it's worth every penny, I'm sure. Then you want me to do it? That was never in question. Now, can you start tomorrow? I can start and finish tomorrow. Oh, that would be wonderful. Excuse me, Mrs. Lowell. Yes? Yeah. You have a visitor. Oh, how nice. Who is it? Your sister. She's here now? Well, shall I tell her you're busy? Ah. Uh, no, no, of course not. Please, show her in. Yes, ma'am. I guess our timing is a little off. Huh? Uh, now, where were we? Uh, when you wanted me to be here. Uh, yes, um, uh, 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Fine. Goodbye, Mrs. Lloyd. Goodbye, and uh, Felicia will show you out. Yes. Oh, well, Linda, my love. I knew it wasn't sincere. What does that mean? Peter said that you missed me. But if the first thing out of your mouth is so phony, so phony, so I can't possibly have any love for you, can I? I mean, I'm just the mean, cruel, older sister. No comment. Oh, with that kind of attitude, I'm really quite surprised that you even showed up. Peter, I'm here because of Peter. Why, did he send you? No, no, he didn't. He doesn't even know that I'm here. I, I, I didn't tell him. So what about Peter? Well, I am sick of you using him as a go-between. It is not fair to him. And, you know, he's made it clear that he's very tired of it. I'm sure he's quite tired of it. But it was a very desperate attempt. But, Linda, I have left messages for you all over town. Message after message at the boarding house and then at Tony's place. But you just chose not to. I mean, you just ignore all the messages. That's right. I have nothing to say to you. <sighs> have you just completely cut me right out of your life? You cut yourself out. Linda, we happen to be the only family left for each other. No, no, I'm starting a new family. Peter and I are going to be a family. But I'm your sister. I should be a part of that. I want to be a part of that. Well, then you want it enough to stop bothering Peter, to stop lying to him? Lying to him? Yes, about my supposed mental condition. He, he doesn't even believe those stories, and you're making a big fool of yourself. Oh, I can see that reconciliation's not going to be very easy. might be easy if you change overnight. But then, uh, I don't think that the tooth fairy handles that sort of thing, does she? Oh, come on, Melinda. We can stand here all evening and trade insults, but that's not the point, is it? For goodness sakes. I want to be your sister again. I realize that you love Peter very much, and I know that he loves you, too. You uh, also know that we're going to be married. Yes. I realize that soon you're going to be Mrs. Peter Jensen, and I'm sure you'll be okay. Very happy. Well, since you accepted, I suppose next you'll offer us land fair for our wedding ceremony. That's right. How did you know that? Because I know you. And I guess the next step will be to come on our honeymoon with us. You try to run away from me again, girl? 
You hurt me. That's because you didn't obey orders. Just what do you think this is? The Marine Corps? Why don't you get lost? Go make some of that awful tea of yours. Or go anywhere but here where it ain't none of your business. You wait one minute, kiddo. This morning, when I was visiting Becky in your hotel room, I allowed you to throw me out. But now, Mr. Jackson, this is my home, my living room, and that is my friend, and I am not going anyplace. Uh, well, we're going home. I'm not going anywhere with you. I'm not going to let you hurt me no more. Becky Lee, there ain't no need to hurt you ever again. What do you mean? Nothing. And he wasn't home. Now get your things and let's go. Her things are unpacked. And she's staying right here where she belongs. Mm -hmm. She belongs with me and she belongs to me. Mr. Jackson, you cannot own another person. That is slavery. And they passed a law against that some time ago. It is against the law also to buy a bride. A 14-year-old bride. And it is against the law to beat that bride just because she wanted to talk to a friend. Oh, yeah. Well, it's against the law to do something else, too. And Becca Lee knows well enough. Don't you, Rebecca Lee? Now, I am going to say this polite one more time. You get your things, and we're going to get out of here. No! I said yes! No, let her alone! Just let her alone! I'm going to have the police here so fast. I am going to have you in the hostel for wife beating so fast, Mr. Jackson. You're not even going to be able to swear. You think I'm going to walk out of here and leave you here? Well, you're going to have to. Maybe I'll come live with you in a couple of days or something. No, we ain't got a couple of days. We are leaving Landview and we are going right now. Why? Up here. Why do you have to leave so fast? You lied to me. Richard was home. Miss Hopkins needs to kill Richard. So what time is the charity guild meeting up? Oh, in about an hour. Well then, uh, Vicky and I are going to Tony Lord's place for that dinner we didn't have the night I was taking hostage. Oh, that sounds nice. It should be. I've had enough coffee. I think I'll go over to Tony Lord's a little early. Talk to a few people. Care to join us? No, no thanks. I, uh, I want to see Paul later, and uh, I'd like to do a little more thinking. Okay, Pat. I'll leave you with your thoughts. Okay. Give my love to Vicky, will you? I will. I will indeed. I'll give her my love, too. Oh. Sure. Oh, I'm glad to see you. Glad to see you. Everybody said you're all right, are you? Terrific. Top of the mark, huh? Oh, by the way, we're going over to your restaurant tonight for dinner. Oh, fantastic. You ordered the biggest steak on the menu, and it's on the house. Why, thank you, sir. I'll do that. Take care, Pat. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you. Hi. Hi. I, um, I just stopped by to check on Anna. Oh, well, she's at a, a hospital meeting with Vicky. It should be another hour or so. Oh, well, then I'll... Check on her later, I guess. Why are you staring at me? <laughs> Sorry. You said sometimes I forget how beautiful you are. I, uh, ran into Kendall. Oh? He's getting out tomorrow. Must be why you're so happy. Couldn't I have gone to the hospital with Richard? Because you'd probably get in the way. Now look, I just have to ask you a few more questions. Oh, to hell with your questions. I want to be with Richard. He's going to be all right. How do you know? Are you a doctor? No, but I think the ambulance arrived in time. Uh, uh, he's alive and... Oh, come on. He lost a lot of blood. Look, would you just take it easy? He's in good hands. Why don't you come over here, sit down, and go over everything step by step again, okay? All right. Richard and I had a dinner date, but he didn't show up. So I tried to call. There was no answer. And I finally decided just to come by here. When I got to the building, I saw Luke Jackson, his husband, running out of the building. 
doesn't look like he's been fighting. Did he see you? No. And I ran up here and I found Richard unconscious. I guess they must have known each other, huh? Oh, they hate each other. Let's see, we got Jackson coming out all messed up. And you found Abbott up here with his head open. Yeah, now look, I've answered all your questions. Now can I go to the hospital? Yeah. Do you know where Jackson's living? I heard something like he and Becky stay at the Polidor Hotel. Okay. Let's go. Say good night. Yes, and um, well, if you don't like it, we could talk. Oh, sure. Why don't you sit down? Mm -hmm. I want to talk to you too. Oh. Well, uh, you want to go first? <laughs> no, you go ahead. Okay. Well, as you know, I've been doing a lot of thinking and. Um, A selfish one, like I told you to? Yes. And I've decided that when you come home tomorrow, I'll be waiting for you as your wife. Richard. Yeah, well, I think you would, since you're the one responsible for what happened. Edwina's cruelty continues while Richard fights for his life and on General Hospital. Maybe I should just tell the truth about me and David now. And the only thing that you have to remember is to make sure that nobody ever knows.